Hello. I have just gone to Adobe Animate and File New. I'm going to choose Action Script 3.0 and hit OK. And what I'd like to do is modify my document to be 900 pixels wide by 700 pixels high. I'll hit OK. Uh, I have on my clipboard a little drawing that I did. It's not much. Um, I'm just putting it there because I would like it to be the reward page for the action script that I want to add. So here's my little drawing. I'll call this layer flower. What I want this to do is I want the viewer to come to a page, my fr front page, click on a button and have the button bring them to, to this flower page. So what I'm going to do in my timeline is I'm going to grab this keyframe and drag it out to frame 20. Uh, so you can see that there's no keyframe here, it's just a little circle, uh, but if you go out in time, there's my flower and the keyframe is represented by a black dot. Uh, if I were to export this movie right now, uh, it would look like this, right? It's looping and I have no content until frame 20 and then frame 20 is on there for such a short amount of time. What I need to do is go to Window, Actions, and add a stop action on my frame 20. So I can see now that in addition to a little black dot of my content, I have a little tiny A. And that means when I go to the Window, Actions, I can see the stop action. It means that I have action script content on frame 20. That's what that little A means. Now I'd like to go to my first frame and I want to add a button so that when the user clicks on a button they jump to frame 20. Before I do that I would like to go to Window Actions and put a stop, S-T-O-P, open parentheses, close parentheses, semicolon, in that first frame. So I have a stop in the first frame and on frame 20. In this way when I go to File Export I'm just going to see a white screen because it's stuck on my first frame. I'm going to go ahead and add a button. I'm just going to use my simple rectangle tool to draw a button here. And uh, it's actually not a button at all. It's just a little raw drawing. I can tell by the dotted outlines. Maybe I'll zoom in a little bit here. Um, to turn it into a button, what I need to do is go to Modify, Convert to Symbol, and in my Convert to Symbol, I'll choose Button from the drop-down, and I can say something like Pink Button. I'm using Camel Case, which means uh, the second word is capitalized. You cannot have any spaces or dashes or forward slashes when you name uh, symbols that are going to be controlled by ActionScript. So camel case is a great way, or I could just call it pink. Uh, by calling it pink button, I'm naming it semantically, meaning that um, it's a recognizable name that should make sense to the viewer. Um, when I hit OK, I now have this special property. When I double click, watch, this is my main timeline here. But when I double click on this button, look what happens. I'm inside something different. I'm inside the button. Here's the main timeline, my scene one, and here I'm inside there. These are the breadcrumbs that let me know that I'm inside of the pink button. And I'll call this inside button. And I have a couple of uh, interesting, unusual timeline options. I have an up, over, down, and hit state. What I'd like to do is I'd like to get the, the user feedback and I'm going to hit F6, F6, F6 to add keyframes to the over, down, and hit states so that when the user rolls over this button, it'll change color in the over state. If they click on it, it'll change color again. And this way, if the user, when they roll over, they can be like, oh yeah, this is an activated button. The hit state is the area that I want to be hot, if you will, uh, the area that is the rollover area for the button. Uh, okay, great. That's how I want my button to work. Um, I'll go to scene one, and let me test this by doing command return on my desktop. Great. That's what my button looks like. That's just what I wanted.
I would like to add some text to that button. So I had gone back to my main timeline. I'm going to double click on the button. I'm inside the button and look, I can add a layer. And I'm going to put the word click on top of this. Click me. Now that is just going to stay the same color no matter what uh, where the user is. Well, that's not a good color. That's a good color. Let me, again, using my breadcrumbs, go back to scene one, and I'll hit command return. Great. Yeah, great. That's just what I wanted to say. Perfect. So I have my movie. Uh, I have my flower. I have my button. I'm going to save this file. Um, lesson two, and I'll put that in my save. Great. Thanks, Creative Cloud, for letting me know that. Uh, thanks for that. Okay, great. The problem is I have a button, but it doesn't actually work at the current moment. Correct? It does highlight and roll over, but it, there's no activity with that button. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my window actions so I can see my action script window. I'm going to resize this. It's a little bit big for my purposes. And then more importantly, under window is a panel called code snippets. So window code snippets. What I'd like to do is I would like to choose a code snippet that will allow animate to write code for me. If I twirl down action script and then go to timeline navigation, I can choose click, go to, frame, and stop, which is what I want to have happen. I want it to go to frame 22 and stop. So when I double click on that, it says, hey, the selected symbol requires an instance name. Animate will create an instance name before applying the code sample. I'm going to hit cancel because I can add that instance name myself. What I need to do is I need to click my button and go to Window Properties. And here's my instance name. I'm going to say Pink Button. And you might be like, wait, we already named the button. Yes, we named the symbol Pink Button, but we didn't call the Pink Button an instance name in a way that uh, ActionScript can talk to. We still use that camel case convention, which we should do across the board, but this is where it's going to uh, get picked up in the code snippets. So now I've clicked on that. I've gone to properties and named it. I now have gone to code snippets, twirl down action script, timeline navigation, click go to frame and stop. I'll double click on this little icon here and look what happens. Animate writes all the code that I need right here. This code is saying pink button, which is that property name I give it, add event listener, when someone clicks on the mouse, do this uh, little snippet of code. It, we can also say do this function, because the function is a little snippet of code. So the function, which has a long elaborate name, uh, then says when there's a mouse event, which is clicking, go to and stop on frame 5. We don't actually want frame 5, we want frame 20 because that's where my flower is up here. We can see it's on frame 20. I'll just double check. Oh, actually it's on frame 21. Ooh, let me put go to and stop 21. Great. Now if I do command return and hit click me, it jumps to frame 21. Perfect. That's just what I was looking for. Great. Uh.